will have a fact sheet to give to you at the end of the service. Uh, but this morning, you won't have any handout and you won't be uh, getting any piece of paper because I just want to move as the Holy Spirit prompts us. Is that okay? Amen. How many of you are happy that you are in the house of God? That you are joyful that you are here? Amen. How many of you are so happy that you have defeated the devil? Amen. He tries to stop you from coming, but you have overcome him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you can give me a second. One. Praise the Lord. I just want to get ready. Praise God. Where's that thing? <coughs> Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Wonderful. Can I ask you to go to Psalm 103, verse 2? Psalm 103, verse 2. The title for today is, God has guaranteed to heal you. He has guaranteed your healing. I know that a lot of times the reason why people don't receive healing from God or don't receive provision is because somehow... I'm not 100% convinced. And so it's my job to convince you with the Word of God. It's my job to convince you with the operation of the Holy Spirit. I'm so glad to know that our God is the God who moves. Amen. God never sits still. The Word of God never sits still. The Word of God moves. Amen. And for those of you that have not received Kingdom Warriors, make sure that you get them. Because if you think that I'm your pastor, if you accept me as your pastor, then what I receive is what God has for you. Amen. You need the Word of God, not just on Sunday, but every day of your life. Amen. Take that kingdom warrior, and that will make you a warrior against the devil. How many of you know that life is tough? You don't have to fake it till you make it. You can overcome because that's your calling. To be more than a conqueror, more than an overcomer. Not overcoming the people around you, but overcoming the devil. Amen. Lift up your hands and say with me, I'm a conqueror. I'm a warrior. I'm a winner. Amen. Psalm 103 verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not. Say with me, forget not. One more time, forget not. All his benefits. Wow. 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 All his benefits. You know, how many of you, you have been serving the Lord for a long time and you don't know his benefits? Oh, I just serve you. It's fine. I just love you. I serve you. Whatever you want. No. No, don't be like that. Don't be such a Mung Tata Christian. Don't be such a, no. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Does God really heal me? I'm not sure. Maybe sometimes yes, sometimes no. Does God provide for you? I don't know. Maybe sometimes yes. I s no. You need to be absolutely 100% sure. And forget not all, A-L-L, -L, all his benefits. Can you name me some of the benefits? Healing. What other benefits have you got? Grace. Joy. Peace, provision, protection, hallelujah, forgiveness of sins, all the benefits. You know, you can spend half an hour praying and praying out all the benefits and thank God. That's a prayer of thanksgiving. And can I ask you, what caused God to perform miracles in the wilderness when they were in lack? The prayer of thanksgiving coming out of the mouth of Jesus. The prayer of thanksgiving multiplied the bread and the fish. How many of you believe that God can multiply the nooks in your wallet? I believe that. I know somebody, he did not have enough money to pay for the printing of his books. And he only had 10, like $20 nooks. But the Lord changed the $20 nooks to become $200 nooks. And instead of having 10 $20 nooks, he had 10 
$200 notes. What's the difference? It's just a zero. When you have nothing and you have to rely God on something, it does not matter. It's just a zero. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But God can put something before the zero. And God can put many zeros before the zero. Do you believe in the supernatural God? Do you believe in the God who is over and above your thinking? Over and above your imagination? Or do you just believe in your hard work? Or do you just believe in somebody's hard work? No, I don't want to believe in my hard work, though I work hard. The Bible says that if you do not work, you do not eat. But the Bible says Paul labored more abundantly in the Word of God. Amen. I believe in supernatural provision. And I work hard in the Word of God. I work hard in the service of God. I don't work hard to make money because I don't have to make money. He is my provider. Lift up your hands and receive the grace. You know, if you do your best to make money, that's how you become prideful. Look at me, I've made so much money. No more. No more. No. He is the one who provides for me. His grace will profusely abound in your life. Come on, lift up your hands. His grace to profusely abound in your life. Do you believe in the grace? Do you believe in the grace? Do you believe in the supernatural provision of God? Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Forget out all his benefits. Continue with verse 3. Verse 3. Come on, all the way to verse 5. Verse 3. Forget out all his benefits. How many of you know verse 3? Come on. Who forgives? All your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases, all together in one verse. I call this the double portion. If you believe that Jesus has saved you from hell, you need to believe that Jesus can save you from sickness and disease. It's all together. You can't separate them. People try to separate them. That's what the doctors are doing. I'm talking about the ungodly doctors. You know, they heal you so that you can go out and sin some more. They heal you so that you can go out and go to the pub. You can go and do drugs. You can do and work hard for yourself. I work hard. Why do I need to believe in Jesus? You know, I'm doing well. I'm rich in my own strength. Why do I need Jesus? But the Word of God says that He's the one who has forgiven you of all of your sins. He's the one who has healed you of all your diseases. Hallelujah. That's how I came to Christ. It's through his healing. Hallelujah. Don't separate God. He cannot be separated. You believe in his salvation, you believe in his healing. You believe in his healing, you believe in his provision. Can we say amen? We can't tear God apart into portions. Continue. Verse 4. Amen. Who redeems your life from destruction? When we talk about sickness and disease, we're talking about destructive thoughts that come to your mind. Destructive thoughts that destroy your peace, that destroy your relationships with people, that tries to destroy your faith. You know, it's very important that you don't, you don't take your eyes off Jesus. Don't take your eyes off Jesus and put your eyes on people. The minute you put your eyes on people, you will falter. How many of you know that your car follows wherever you look? How many of you know that when you drive, you need to look ahead? You can't be looking back and driving forward at the same time, can you? You can't. Your car follows your vision. It's important that you don't take your eyes off Jesus and put your eyes on a preacher, put your eyes on a pastor, put your eyes on your family, put your eyes on the people around you. The minute you start taking your eyes off God and put your eyes on people, I guarantee you, you will fail. The minute you look at people, that's when frustrations happen. That's when disappointments happen. That's when idols take place. Your eyes must be on Jesus. He is the one 
There's no other. There's no other. Only Jesus. There's no other. And don't keep your eyes on yourself neither. You can't be your provider. It would be very hard. It would be very hard for you to, to provide for yourself. It would be very hard for you to heal yourself. Even doctors can't heal themselves. Amen? Keep your eyes on Jesus. Say to the person next to you, keep your eyes on Jesus. Say to the person next to you, keep your eyes on the Word of God. Amen. Can you see the contrast? He redeemed your life from destruction. No evil thoughts. No depressive thoughts. No accusing thoughts. Redeems your life from destruction and crowns you. Come on, touch your head. You're wearing a crown. Crowns you with what? Loving kindness and tender mercies. You know how often we treat others by what we think they deserve. We need to repent of that. Don't treat me by what you think I deserve. Don't treat anybody by what you think they deserve. Because God does not treat us according to what we deserve. He treats us according to his unconditional love. How many of you want to be like Jesus? How many of you want to copy him? Amen. This is one area that we can copy him. Amen. Hallelujah. Say to the person next to you, I so love you. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. How come you can, t you can do that? Because you have been crowned with his loving kindness. It's like, I love that little girl's name, loyal kindness. It's such a beautiful name. Amen. Anybody who is about to give birth, you can consider this name, loving kindness. <laughs> <laughs> he has crowned you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Come on, say to yourself, He has crowned me with loving kindness and tender mercies. So do you have to condemn yourself? Do you have to accuse yourself? Why? Because He is kind. Because he's merciful. Mercy means, woo, if he wants to judge you, he can. <laughs> but he chooses not to judge you. That's called mercy. And can we say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Now go with me to Psalm 107, verse 20. Psalm 107, verse 20. So remember, the element of mercy is in healing. Because a lot of times we think, you know, I'm not getting healed because... I still have sin in my life because I'm not perfect yet. But God's mercy covers our imperfection. Do you hear that? Amen. One more time. Say with me. God's mercy covers my imperfection. Amen. Well, the Lord said to me this morning, he said, well, you have eyes to see. Well, you have to look anyway. It's better to look at the good than to look at the bad. Amen? It's better to look at the strong instead of looking at the weak. You know, there are circumstances and situations in our lives. There are people in our lives. Look at the good. Choose to look at the good. Look at the good, and you will get the good. Amen? Say with me, I look at the good, and I will get the good. Because whatever you look at all the time, that's will, that will become you. How many of you have ever got frustrated because you're looking at that person's mistake? And you look at that mistake and you meditate on that mistake and you're thinking about that mistake. Before you know it, you have become the mistake. You get frustrated <laughs> and you chuck a tantrum and you start cursing. Hey, that's why the Bible tells us to look at the good. I may not have a thousand dollars, but I have a hundred dollars. So I look at the hundred dollars. And when I look at the hundred dollars, I thank God. Thank you, Lord, that you've given me a hundred. Thank you, Lord, that I can do so much with a hundred. I thank you, Lord, that I can tithe and I can give offering with a hundred. Thank you, Lord. Do you think God will bless you? Do you think God will bless you? Do you think he will multiply your thankful heart? Amen. You have to choose between doing things God's way or doing things the devil's way. Glory be to God. Amen. Lift up your hands and say with me, I do things. God's way. 
One more time. I do things God's way. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He sent his word and healed them. How many of you do English in high school? Yeah? In English, you study about the nouns, right? Nouns. So nouns. And then you study verbs. So verbs are different from nouns. Verbs means something that moves, but noun means is an object. Like you talk about the chair. So the chair is a noun, and it's it. <laughs> you know, if you use it in proper English, word is it. But in the Bible, word is he. The word became flesh and dwelled, moved among us. So when we talk about the word, we're talking about something that moves. When we talk about the word, we're talking about the performance of God. Even now, as I'm giving you the word, the word is healing you. The word is rejuvenating you. The word is empowering you. He sent his word and healed them. And it's still the same today. He is sending his word and he is healing us. How many of you know that your body is organic? You know, we're living in this generation when everybody talks about organic, organic, organic. You better look at your body. Your body is organic. Your body is fluid. Your body is changing all the time. How many of you know that your teeth are changing? I've been to the dentist and my dentist told me that my teeth are changing. My gum is changing. Everything about me is changing. Everything that is about you is changing every day. Every day. How many of you have noticed the growth in your fingernails, the growth in your toenails, the growth in your hair? How many of you have noticed that your body is growing all the time? But the world had educated us in the natural science. Science is natural. The world had educated us that when you have reached a certain age, your body starts to deteriorate, starts to age. So it's growing down instead of growing up. But the Word of God says that when we wait upon Him, our youth shall be renewed or rejuvenated like the eagles, and we shall run and not be wearied, referring to your joints. Come on, touch your joints. Your joints, your bones, your kneecaps, your wrists. Amen. No other riders. No other riders. No other riders. Praise God. Amen. Glory be to God. Your limbs are healthy. Your joints are healthy right now. Your joints are healthy. Your limbs are healthy. Your wrists are healthy. Amen. Rejuvenation. Rejuvenation. Come on, say with me rejuvenation. You know, we need that every day. Amen. You need that every day. Your youth. Amen. We'll be renewed. The, the, the Lord knows that. We need that renewal every day, no matter how old or how young you are. Amen. You shall run and not be wearied, and you shall walk and not faint. Amen. And even natural science, natural science said that now, because of a lot of technologies, because of the health consciousness, they're expecting the mortality rate to rise up to 100. So can you think with me for a moment? You're living up to a hundred year old. So how should you live? Hmm? How should you live? Come on, ask yourself. Think with me. If you're 60, if you're 70, if you're 50, you're going to live to a hundred year old. Are you going to waste your time every day? Are you going to waste your time? Are you going to just plan for retirement and do nothing? Huh? Are you? Are you? Are you expecting yourself to grow older? No. Or are you expecting yourself to grow younger? Are you expecting yourself to be stronger, more powerful, more energetic, wiser by the second? Hallelujah. As you believe, so shall it be done unto you. Hallelujah. Your life is yours. It's up to you. What do you want to make of your life? What do you want to make of your life? It's yours. You're not a victim. Amen. Do something about your life. Live a life that is good. What did the Bible tell you? What does the Bible tell you? What is the perfect will of God? With long life. 
He will satisfy you and show you his salvation. Can we say amen? Well, don't tell me, oh, yes, I'm going to live up to 100. I'm going to have a, more, a few more kids. No, that's not what I want. I've had my children already. <laughs> amen. I'm serving God. Glory be to God. Don't live your life around your kids. Don't have that Ignatz syndrome. Don't derive your life from your children. Don't derive your life from the performance of your children or from the achievements of your children. They have their own lives. Every one of us. How many lives have you got? How many lives have you got? Make sure you live it. Make sure you live it. At the end of the day, don't say, I've lived all my life for my kids. Your children will tell you, I didn't ask you to. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Lift up your hands. Seek you first the kingdom of God. And all these other things shall be added unto you. Who is to be the first in our lives? Who is to be the first in our lives? Come on, answer me louder. Who is to be the first in your life? One more time. Who is to be the first in your life? When you follow God, everybody follows you. When you follow God, everybody follows you. Do you get that? When you follow God, everybody follows you. Hallelujah. And God will make a wonderful, beautiful life out of you. Amen. Children are good. You know, don't misunderstand me. I love kids. But don't allow children to destroy your marriage. Don't allow kids to destroy your relationship with the Lord. Don't allow even your spouse to destroy your relationship with God. Don't go to any don't go to hell with anybody. Don't go to hell with anybody. Don't go to hell with anybody. But take somebody with you to heaven. Do you get this? Amen. Come on, say with me. I don't go to hell with anyone. But I would take somebody with me to heaven. Meditate on this. This is powerful revelation. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. Exodus 15, 26. You know, there are people, even among Christians, that don't believe in heaven and hell anymore. All they believe is just healing, prosperity, provision, and the focus is just, you know, this life, this life, this life. It's in my Bible. Heaven. It's in your Bible. Hell. Heaven is as real as hell. Hell is as real as heaven. There is such a thing called eternal life. If all that you're thinking of is just this life, I'm not sure if you're safe. It's both in this world and in the world to come. And eternal life is a lot longer than the life on earth. Don't ever be so blessed and so good and so busy that you have no time for eternity. Say with me, eternity. Say with me, eternity. And there are not many preachers that talk about hell these days. There are not many pastors that warn you from the flames of hell, but they are real. They are real. They are real. You don't want to go to hell, and you don't want anybody in your family. You don't want anybody around you to go to hell. And you better pray. You better intercede. You better pray. And you don't compromise. You don't compromise. Compromise is of the devil. You don't compromise. And when you don't compromise, you will have your breakthrough. When you compromise, you won't get your breakthrough. You ask my husband, when he married me, he thought that I was as tame as a sheep. <laughs> but then he discovered, no, I'm fierce as a lion. <laughs> Why? Because I don't compromise. I don't compromise. I won't tell you anything just to make you feel better. I won't tell you whatever just to make you feel better. I won't lie to you and make you feel better. I won't tell you there is no hell just to make you feel better. 
I told my sister-in-law, I told my mother-in-law that there is a heaven and there is a hell, and both of them are saved now. You know, there is power. There is power. Power in sticking to the truth of God's word. Can we say amen? If anybody comes to become a Christian just because of you, you better forget it. Nobody can be saved because of you or me. Everybody has to be saved because of Jesus. Amen? If your friend is saved because you're good to him, you're helping him, you're doing this for him, you're doing that for him, you know how many churches do that? You know, always helping, helping, and helping. Then you, are, you have a church that is full of people who just want you to help. No. No. Salvation is a real experience. It's a supernatural experience. It's between you and Jesus. It's between you and Jesus. You repent of your sin and you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. Heaven is real to you and the power of God is real to you. Can we say amen? No kids can become a Christian because of your parents. You don't come to church because of your parents. You have to come to church because of Jesus. You have to be a child of God because of Jesus. And Jesus is real in your heart then. It's not the voice from the outside of you. It's the voice on the inside of you. Can we say amen? And nobody can give you that experience but Jesus. Nobody can give you that experience but the Holy Ghost. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. That's why when you leave your country, when you left India, here, when you, when you left wherever, um, Holland or left uh, wherever, South Africa, you're still looking for a church. Because you know, and you know, and you know, there you can find Jesus. Amen. Do you get it? Amen. Hallelujah. You know, there will be tests that will come into our lives to test you. Whether you're coming to church because everybody loves you. You're coming to church because everybody recognizes you. You're coming to church because we're giving you gifts. No, no, no. There is a test that you have to pass. Is that I'm going to church. Whatever. I'm going to church. Doesn't matter. Whatever is happening. Doesn't matter how they're treating me. Doesn't matter what's happening. I am going to church. That's how you know. That's how you know that Jesus is living on the inside of you. And you have to pass that test. Because it is written that everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Including your calling. Amen. How many of you are ready to overcome? Amen. Lift up your hands. You're ready to overcome. No demons can overcome you. Praise God. Amen. Look at Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. I just want you to look at that. Look at the, the, towards the very end. I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. Sickness belongs to the world, does not belong to the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sickness belongs to the world, does not belong to the church. Do you get it? How many of you are shouting? How many of you are rejoicing? <laughs> Amen. Sickness does not belong to the church. Sickness does not belong to us. Why? Because I am the Lord that healeth you. Amen. Jesus has fulfilled that promise. Amen. Jesus has guaranteed your healing. How did he guarantee your healing? He took your pain and he took your sicknesses when he was on the cross. What do you mean? The Bible says that cursed is everyone that is hung on a tree. Sickness is part of the curse. 
Sickness, you can find it listed in Deuteronomy chapter 28 as a curse. And that's why in the Old Testament, whoever was sick, whoever was deformed could not get into the tabernacle. Remember the lady with the, the woman with the issue of blood? She was not allowed among the Jews or she would be stoned because that's one of the laws. A sick and deformed body cannot enter into God's perfection, the Holy of Holies and the Holy Place. But what happened was that Jesus became a curse for you and for me. He who knew no sin, he took our sin. Sin is spiritual. All the demons attached themselves to him, to his body. And that's why when he was on the cross, his face became so marred. His body became so ugly. His body was eaten up, being eaten up with all kinds of sickness, with leprosy, with heart disease, with asthma, with arthritis, with eczema, with all kinds of, sin, all kinds of sickness, any, any sickness that have a name, any sickness that even didn't have a name in those days was on his body. So the pain that he was suffering was more than just the weep, was more than just the weeping. The pain that he was suffering was internal and external, and the agony of his mind, the mental sickness, the voices that he heard. Amen. All kinds of mental sickness was harassing him. All kinds of sickness on his body. He who knew no sin became sin for us. He became the curse for us because he had to die on the cross. There's no way that he could die. They couldn't chop off his head. No. They had to nail him to the cross as prophesied. Why? Why did he do that? Why did he do that? Come on, you tell me, church. Why did he do that? To forgive us of all of our iniquities and to heal us of all our diseases. So how can you say, I don't think God will heal me? How can you say, I don't think I'm worthy to be healed? How can you say that? How can you even think like that? Let me ask you, is his will to heal you? Is his will to heal you? Is it the will of the Father to heal you? Amen. The Father who allowed his son to be crucified on the cross. Is it his will to heal you? Is it the will of Jesus to heal you? Is it the will of the Holy Ghost to heal you? Yes. Now follow me with this intelligence. I call it spiritual intelligence. Follow me with this spiritual logic. If we pray anything according to the will of God, it shall be done unto us. Lift up your hands and thank God for your healing. Lift up your hands and thank God for your healing. Hallelujah. He paid the price for your healing. He had guaranteed you your healing. Well, somebody said, but I know that I'm aging. You know, everybody you know who is maybe 70, 80, you know, when you're aging, you get sick, and then you get sick and you die, you go to heaven. No. You don't have to die sick. You don't have to die sick. Death does not have to be accompanied by pain and sickness. How many of you have stood before somebody, you know, before the the bed of somebody who is suffering, agonizing because of pain. How many of you have, have seen somebody agonizing because of pain? How many of you know that pain is very real? I know that in these days we have all the painkiller, we have all that, you know. Some of us, we are so weak, we can't even handle a headache. The minute your, your head starts to play up, you get a Panadol. You need to train yourself to be tough. You know, don't, don't, don't give your kid a Panadol the minute you know she's sick. Let him go through it. That's what I did with my kids. You know, your body had to learn to be strong. 
I, you know, I know somebody who's a doctor, and then he kept giving his kids medicine, so ma a lot of medication, so much so that the teeth of his kids, you know, are rotten. Your body has to be trained to fight. And that's what fasting is about. You need to train your body to fight. You need to train your emotions to fight. Somebody's bad to me? No, I'm strong in the love of God. I'm fighting this battle. I'm not repaying evil with evil, but I'm overcoming evil with good. That is training. That is training. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. My kids, when they were little, pray for them. Pray for them. And every time they were healed. I remember there was one time, Trisha, when she was little, she came to me and she said, Mom, my belly is hurting really bad. And I said, oh, really? And then, and then she came to me again. Mom, my belly is hurting really bad. And then I forgot. I've never, because when I was little, my mom would rub like ointment, you know? <laughs> my mom would, read, would rub a kind of ointment on my belly. So like, forgot, I forgot. And then I thought, oh, was, is this what she's after? And then the Holy Ghost reminded me, no, she's asking for prayer. And so I prayed for her and she was fine. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't be overcome by the devil, but overcome the devil with the word of God. Hallelujah. The word of God performs healing. Say to the person next to you, the word of God performs healing. Hallelujah. Amen. I am the Lord that healed you. You know, it's so easy to sing those songs. But can you imagine you are somebody who is blind? Can you imagine you're somebody who is deaf? Can you imagine you're somebody who is paralyzed, confined to a wheelchair for 20 years? Can you believe that he is the Lord that he led you? This is present tense. Can you believe that he is the Lord that he led you? You said, well, I've had somebody pray for me. It doesn't work. Then keep praying. Keep believing. What did Jesus say? He said, because you do not give up, you keep praying, you're contending, you're persevering. What did Jacob said? Jacob said, I will not let you go till you have blessed me. Through faith and patience, inherit the promises. You need to find out how much you believe. Do you believe only for one day? Do you believe only for two days? Or do you believe until you see the results? Lift up your hands with me. I believe until I see the results. Amen. So that's why it's so important for you to learn what faith is, how to apply faith. It's so important for you not just hear one sermon one week. It's important for you to hear the sermons that I've done in the past, for you to get into the Word of God, dig up the Word of God, get into Kingdom Warrior. You need to be trained. You need to be equipped. There is not even one soldier that would go to the battlefield without being trained, without being equipped. You can't just shout, I'm an overcomer, I'm a learner, I'm an overcomer, and you don't learn. We need to learn. Amen. Say with me, I need to be trained. I need to learn. Amen. That's why you're here in church. Go with me to Mark chapter 1 verse 40. I want you to look at one very important person in your Bible. Who is this person? A leper. You know, who is a leper? A leper is somebody that's got leprosy. What is leprosy? Leprosy is a kind of sickness that eats up the flesh. When when that person is leprous, like in those days, they were not allowed, you know, to be in public. They cover themselves in shame. They lost their life altogether. Living becomes a misery. It's so difficult to live. It's such a terrible, terrible sickness. Amen. And this leper that had been suffering from inferiority, suffering from a lack of self-worth, suffering from shame, and he mustered all his courage. He mustered all his courage. I'm sure he had been rejected in the past. He had been rejected by physicians, rejected by doctors. You know, a lot of times you see in the Bible, those that become warriors are those that have been desperate. Remember I told you last Sunday, the woman with an issue of blood for 12 years, 
she had been trying, you know, to get healing. For 12 years, she had been trying to get healing and she spent all her money. She became, you know, she was once rich and now she became almost like a beggar. She lost all her money. She lost all her dignity. She lost all her self-worth. She lost all her hope. But what happened was that she mustered her courage. She summoned her courage. The same with this leper. I understand what it is like to be in tough times. I've been in tough times. I've been on my floor with my face to the floor. And I said to the Lord, I don't want to live without you. There's no life without Jesus. There's no life without Jesus. The devil can lie to you and you think that you have a good life for a, lot, a, a short time. No, your sin will prove you wrong. Your situations will prove you wrong. If you backslide, I tell you, there are more than a million demons waiting to, to, to attack you. And not only will they attack you, they will attack your children and your children's children. Backsliding, there is a price to pay for backsliding. A huge, humongous price to, price to pay for backsliding. And I've had my face to the floor and I said, Lord, I don't want to live without you. You need to get despair. You need to get into despair. You need to become desperate. That's what happened to the woman with the issue of blood. That's what happened with the leper. And the leper summoned all of his courage and he made his way. Can you imagine? It would be easy for him to come to the front of Jesus. Have you ever been to a service, a healing service? You know, a huge crusade. It's not easy to go to the preacher. And Jesus, you know, multitudes followed him. And the leper made his way. He came to Jesus, imploring him. And you think that you have prayed when you have prayed only five minutes? And you gave up on God because he didn't answer your prayer? The leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him, saying to him. Have you noticed they're all present tense? That means there's a duration of time to him. And what did he say? If you are willing, you can make me clean. I know you can, Jesus. I've heard about your healing power. I've heard about you heal that person. I've heard about you open blind eyes. I've heard about you open deaf ears. I've heard about you made the lame to walk. But what about myself? What about this case here? Am I good enough for you? Will you be willing? You know, some of us, it's not that we're doubting God's ability, but we're thinking, will he come to me personally? Will he do this for me personally? You know, a lack of self, a lack of self-worth is talking to you. The devil is always putting you down and telling you you're not worthy to be blessed. You are not good enough to be blessed. You haven't prayed enough. You haven't fasted enough. You are not good enough. You know who's talking? The devil. You need to get rid of him. Amen. You need to get rid of him. Did God save you when you were not good enough? Come on, answer me. Did God save you when you were not good enough? And if he saved you, can he heal you? If he saves you, will he heal you? Amen. Hallelujah. And Jesus made it very very clear not only to the not only to the leper but to every one of us to every one of us you should not this is what the lord is saying you shouldn't be carrying that inferiority anymore you shouldn't be carrying that self-doubt anymore you shouldn't be carrying that lack of self-worth anymore get rid of it in jesus name amen come on shout and jump with me Amen. Say, I'm worthy. Come on. I'm worthy. I'm worthy. I'm worthy. Hallelujah. And what did Jesus say to the leper? Come on, you tell me. What did Jesus say to the leper? One more time. What did he say? Come on, give us that scripture. Come on, Joshua, verse 41. What did Jesus say? I am willing. Can you close your eyes and picture Jesus saying to you, Whatever need, you, whatever need you have right now, 
Close your eyes. Whatever need you have right now, and you're asking God for it, He's saying to you, I'm willing. He's saying to you, I am willing. I am willing. Amen? I am willing. Let's make that very, very clear. Amen? And I want you to look at 41. Look at verse 41, the beginning of that verse. A lot of times we just say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Well, we need to get to know Jesus. The scripture tells us Jesus moved with compassion. Lift up your hands and ask the Lord to give you compassion. Lift up the hand, your hands, ask God to give you compassion. Don't be so hard in your heart. Compassion. 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 To allow him to move through you to reach the people around you. Take yourself off your mind. Take yourself off your mind and let God move through you. Have somebody else on your mind and not yourself. Jesus moved with compassion. Let me ask you a very practical question. How many people here in this church that you don't know? Are there people in this church that you don't know? Come on, answer me. Should you stay like that? Yes or no? No, why? Because we are families. Because we are brothers and sisters in Christ. If you don't love your brothers and sisters, who are you? When you come to church, is that all you care about? Yourself. When you come to church, is that all you think about? Yourself. How good I am. How much I'm better than everybody around me. If you are, then you need to repent. We need to grow bigger on the inside. Compassion. Come on, say with me, compassion. If there's anybody who is worthy to be lifted up, it's Jesus. He's the one who is above all. Perfect, sinless, powerful, all wise. And yet he did not say, all of you just come worship me. You know, I'm so much better than you. No. He was moved with compassion. Moved with compassion. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, move me with compassion. Moved with compassion. And what did he do? Stretched out his hand and touched the leper. Don't forget a leper. Contagious. Smells. Stinks. I had to repent before the Lord because when I went to China, there was a lot of people, you know, just have to lay hand and pray for them. And then sometimes, you know, they smell really bad. And I was wanting to get a, you know, a deodorant and a shh before I pray for people. But the Lord convicted me and I said, Lord, I'm surely sorry. You know, we have to, uh, we, don't, we should not allow our physical being to stop the flow of God's compassion through us. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. One more time. Say, Lord, move me with compassion. And then he said, I am willing to be cleansed. Amen. And uh, I want to salute all the doctors. You know, all the doctors, I, I just want to salute you because you're doing so well. Whoever comes to you, uh, whether they have bad breath or, <laughs> or whether they have body odor, you still have to treat them. <laughs> So, you know, I salute you. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. And if you look at verse 42. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed. I want you to understand that when it comes to healing, not all healing is instantaneous. Some are. Some are instantaneous, and we are using our faith to believe God for instantaneous miracles. But how many of you know that there was one? There was one among the ten, and he got healed. 
And the Bible says that when he started to walk, what happened? He started to get healed. So healing can come to you as a power of God to activate your healing, to start the healing engine in your body. And I've had times that when I've prayed for people that I have not heard from, and then the next time when I went back and they saw me and they came to me, Pastor Dora, the condition that you prayed for me, I was healed. Amen? There was one person that I prayed for, his year, he did not hear in one year, and his year was open. And he started to hear. I did not know that, but when he told me, that's when I know the miracle had happened. So that's why it's very important for you, once a hand has been laid on you, or once you've prayed and believed God for healing, don't give up. Don't think that, no, I haven't got it. That means God is not healing me. Healing can be a process. And sometimes you don't feel anything, you don't see anything. I've had that happen to myself. I, don't, I didn't feel anything, I didn't see anything, but then I forgot about it, and then I remember, oh, I've been healed. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Amen? So it's very important for you to understand that, okay? Now I want to attack that thing that talks about that uh, you are not worthy. Go with me to uh, Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, verse 8. Chapter, Ma Matthew chapter 8, verse 8. How many of you remember the centurion? He's an intercessor. He came to Jesus for his servant. He came to Jesus for the servant that he loved. And uh, everybody was saying to Jesus, you know, heal him. He's good. Okay, I want you to look at this with the insight of the Holy Ghost. All right? So this centurion, he had a servant suffering, agonizing from pain. And then he was saying in verse 8, The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. Now this is where people picked up that phrase from, I'm not worthy. Why did he say that? You have to understand that he was a Gentile. And in those days, the Gentiles, they, do not, they did not mix with the Jews. Because in the eyes of the Jews, the Gentiles were not worthy. Because, you know, they had not been cleansed by the blood of the animals. They were Gentiles. They were unclean. So they were not worthy to enter into the holy place. Not enter worthy to enter into the holy of holies. So this centurion, being a godly man, he did not want to stir up any trouble for the Jews. He did not want to stir up any trouble for Jesus. So he said, I understand that according to your custom, according to your law, I am not worthy. And that's why I have not invited you to come to my house. And that's why I have not personally come to you myself. But I have sent the Jewish elders to come to you. And when the Jewish elders came to Jesus, they said, he is worthy, you know, he's been good to us. He, he loved our nation and he had built us a synagogue. And Jesus did not say anything. Jesus did not correct their thinking because Jesus, his heart was just healed. And then he went with them. And when he was about to enter in, the centurion sent somebody to Jesus and said, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. So how many of you understand what I'm saying? And I want you to understand the minute you are saved, you have become Jewish, spiritually, not naturally. You have become a child of Abraham. So can you be unworthy? Can you be unworthy? Can you be unworthy? No. Amen. So he said, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. Because as a centurion, as a commander of the army, he understood the power of order. He understood the power of authority. He said, I would speak to my servant to do this. My servant would do that. I would speak to that servant to do that. My servant would do that. He understood the authority of a command. So he says, I know Jesus, you are the commander. 
You are the commander in the heavenlies. You are the captain of the host. How many of you remember Joshua? He's the captain of the host. So you speak a word and every demon has to flee. You speak a word and healing will happen. And Jesus said, I have not found so great faith, not even in Israel. And did his servant get healed? Did his servant get healed? Yes. I want you not to allow any doubts on your mind. I don't want you to have any doubts on your mind. I want you to see and picture your Lord as somebody who is loving, somebody who is kind. He wants to heal you more than you want to be healed. He wants to heal your beloved. He wants to heal your family members more than you want them to be healed. Amen. How many of you remember that there, was, there were these four guys, four men. They brought somebody who was sick and dropped them to the feet of Jesus. And Jesus saw their faith and healed their faith. Jesus can see the faith of an intercessor and heal the person that you're interceding for. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to all stand up with me. Can I have Daphne coming to the keyboard? Amen. Let's exercise our faith in God. And I want you to stand in the gap for somebody. You may not have any sickness in your body. Then you believe God for rejuvenation. You believe God for divine health. Amen. And you have so, if you have somebody in your life that you know is suffering from sickness and disease, I want you to stand in the gap for them as we sing this song and you exercise your faith. And if you have any sickness in your body, I want you to believe God for healing. I'm going to ask you whoever has experienced healing to come and testify. If you have any sickness in your body, anything that is in your body that is not well, believe God to touch you right now. Believe God to do a creative miracle in you. Believe God to heal your body internally and externally. Amen. Amen. And if your head is bald or losing hair, believe God to grow your hair back. Believe God to grow your brows back. Believe God to give you creative miracles. God is greater than the devil. Amen. We're going to sing that song. You are the God that healeth me. And when you sing that song, know that it's not a song. These are the facts. These are the facts. Amen. Jesus had paid for your...